Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. As we all know, under the chip control of the United States, Huawei's Kirin chips can no longer be put into production through TSMC. At the same time, the relevant chip design software and architecture authorization have also been terminated. Under such circumstances, Huawei can only realize the gradual return of high-end chips by laying out the entire chip industry chain by itself. In fact, Huawei has indeed taken this path. The return of many chips, such as Kirin 9000S proves that Huawei has prepared a domestic chip industry chain. After entering 2025, a number of heavyweight technologies have been exposed, and the chip business is expected to surpass foreign companies. Looking back, Huang Renshuan's humility when he mentioned Huawei was not without reason. It is understood that NVIDIA has always been a leading company in the field of AI chips, and its high-end H100 chip is strictly subject to export controls by the United States, restricting Chinese companies from purchasing its products. However, as soon as Huawei's Ascend 384 Supernode Real Machine was unveiled, the performance was directly crushed by 1.7 times, and in some scenarios it even soared to 2 times. What's more ruthless? This time, Huawei did not take the usual path. It directly abandoned the traditional copper wire communication and used 3,168 optical fibers with 6,912 400G optical modules. This is the rhythm of completely killing the communication bottleneck. 384 cards work together like a supercomputer and the total bandwidth soars to 1,229 terabytes per s, which is 107% more efficient than the solution proposed by NVIDIA. In addition, there is new news about Kirin chips. Under the condition of limited external chip foundry channels, Huawei redesigned the chip architecture and further optimized the performance of the chip with the help of the domestic industrial chain. The Kirin 9030, which was exposed, has been squeezed out of 20% more performance improvement under the same 7 nanometers process. You know, the normal iteration in the industry is only 10% to 15%. The extra 5% to 10% is all earned with sweat and wisdom. The 8-core 12-thread design of the Taishan architecture, coupled with the new generation of GPU, has once again set a new record for overall energy efficiency. Huang Renshuan's modesty is not without reason. Facing a company like Huawei with a wolf culture, any technology company would be shocked. First of all, NVIDIA's success is not the success of NVIDIA alone. It relies on the entire U.S. technology industry chain. From chip design, semiconductor equipment to technical patents and engineer systems, NVIDIA only needs to be responsible for chip design and does not need to worry about external chip foundry channels, EDA design software, and raw material supply. However, Huawei's success is based on the premise that almost all American companies in the West have cut off supply. 
Not only do they need to handle chip design software, architecture, chip foundry channels, and even raw material procurement, they all require Huawei's engineers to do it themselves. Under this difficulty, it is extremely difficult for Huawei to catch up with or even surpass technology. If it were put at the same starting line, NVIDIA's AI chip might have been surpassed by Huawei long ago. Secondly, Huawei's layout is so large that NVIDIA dare not even think about it. As a technology company, Huawei started out by relying on communication equipment, but now its business includes automobiles, electricity, coal mining, cloud computing, operating system licensing and other fields. It is not easy to run such a company, let alone compete for the first place in various fields. David Sachs, the head of the White House AI Affairs, said it very bluntly, Huawei is catching up rapidly. This sounds quite polite, but in fact it translates to the United States' advantage is getting less and less. Now, looking back at Huang Renxuan's performance, wearing a Tang suit, speaking Chinese, and praising Huawei in various ways, this is not humility. It is clearly a way to save face for himself. After all, when your opponent quickly narrows the gap from one and a half to two years behind, and even surpasses in some areas, it is better to stabilize the position and keep the Chinese market first instead of confronting it head-on. Interestingly, Huang Xiaoming also specifically emphasized that the opponent is not the enemy, what a level of words. It not only gives Huawei enough face, but also leaves a way out for himself. Business is like a battlefield. Today's opponent may be tomorrow's partner. After all, the road of technological innovation has never been smooth sailing. The United States wants to strangle China with a technological blockade. But what is the result? Instead, it forces out a more powerful Huawei. This is like the principle of a pressure cooker, the greater the pressure, the more amazing the energy that explodes. When Huawei really surpasses Nvidia in the field of AI chips, will Huang Xiaoming regret not being more modest earlier? Or, is his current humility already preparing for that day? Welcome to leave your opinions in the comment section.